look at this monster. It's yeah. kind of like a maraca. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't know that. <coughs> Whoa. <laughs> that's dang good. We did a good job. Yeah, nice. Nice. In case you missed our last vlog, we are back on the road after quarantining for three months in Austin, Texas, and let me tell you, we are excited to be back so exploring <laughs> safely, of course. And our first stop is Santa Fe, New Mexico, which is a place we've always wanted to visit. Unfortunately, a lot of the things we want to do are closed, but we're going to make the most of the day and do what we can safely do, which is wander around town and eat some classic Santa Fe foods. Look at this monster. So our first food stop of the day is for one of my favorite foods, breakfast burritos. And it's said that the term breakfast burrito was first used in Santa Fe or created at a place called Tia Sofia in 1975. That's where it's said that you saw it on a menu for the first time. But we decided to try a different spot for our breakfast burrito. We came to a place called The Pantry, which we've heard has really, really good food and breakfast burritos. And they also have another dish we wanted to try that's local to the area, carne adobada, which is a New Mexico red chili pork stew. Okay, so it's a breakfast burrito, so it comes with eggs and your choice of meat in there. I also decided to go with the carne adobada because it sounds really good and I wanted to give it a try. And on the side, you can go with beans or you can get what's called pantry fries, which it looks like it's like seasoned pan fried potatoes kind of a thing. It just looks so delicious and Catherine accidentally didn't get any on her platter so I'm not sharing is what I'm saying but I think <laughs> she's, gonna, she's gonna fight me. Um, and then on top they put all kinds of cheese on there that's melted and then a fun little twist you can get is what's called Christmas style on the sauces so there's a green chili sauce and a red chili sauce and it looks delicious. All right, let's see what's in this bad boy. It's kind of like Christmas. You don't even know what's in it. I didn't look at the menu. <laughs> it's a present. Oh yeah, look at that. It was really nice and easy to cut into. I'm so excited for this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Man, the meat in here is so soft. Awesome like seasoned flavor, but you still get all kinds of pork flavor in there. So this the sauce that comes on top, Kind of spicy, but I like that, so that's good. I like some spices flavor to me, so mm, I'm digging in. So the carne adobada plate came with obviously the meat, which has the sauce in it, the red chili sauce, which might be the one that Adam thought was spicy. We'll see. And then it came with some rice, which the rice looks so good. It has some kind of a creaminess to it. And then a bunch of what I'm assuming are just pinto beans and some lettuce. So this is basically my definition of the perfect meal. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna make the most perfect combination of all of these things. Mmm, that is the breakfast of champions right here. That is so good. I mean, I know it's kind of a lunch meal. It's on their lunch menu, but I can't really eat breakfast foods. So I settled for this and oh, it's so good. The pork has really, really good flavor. It's super, super soft. And then when you just come, I love combining like meat with rice and beans. So it just really brings it all together. It does have, I feel a little bit of a kick in my throat right here. I think today might be a spicy day for us, spoiler alert. So this is maybe just warming us up to the spices we will have later. Time to try those pantry no, fries. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't let him fool you. He loves sharing. Mm, mm, super good. Wow. They are just so buttery and soft. They kind of just fall apart in your mouth. There's a little bit of skin from the potatoes in there, which kind of adds a different texture. They are amazing. Hey, look, I'm a magician. But seriously, come to the pantry, get the carne adobada breakfast burrito with the Christmas, with the pantry fries, potato things. You will not be disappointed. I am stuffed. It was so dang good. Mm -hmm. 
So we spent some time in New Mexico before, specifically in Albuquerque, White Sands, and Carlsbad Caverns National Park, but this is our first time in Santa Fe together, and oh my gosh, it is absolutely beautiful. When we drove down the main street this morning and just saw the Pueblo architecture and the church, it was just it just took my breath away. I, I don't know. It's I, awesome. It felt like we were outside of the U.S., and I just absolutely <laughs> loved it. And the city's also really cool because it has a smaller town feel, and it's just surrounded with mountains, so the scenery is just incredible. And a few fun facts about Santa Fe, it's not only the state capital of New Mexico, but it's also the oldest capital city and the highest elevated capital city in the United States, sitting at around 7,200 feet. The phrase Santa Fe translates to holy faith, and the city is actually home to the oldest church in the U.S., the San Miguel Mission. The city is also nicknamed the City Different, and the city is just home to so many things that I guess make it different and just a unique mix of history, art, scenery, culture, <laughs> and incredible food, which we can confirm is true. <laughs> Our next Santa Fe treat, we are combining two New Mexico specialties, chilies and chocolate. So we came to this spot called Kakawa Chocolate House. They have a bunch of drinking chocolates, other delicious chocolate treats, but we are here specifically for this guy, which is a New Mexico arbol chili dipped in an agave caramel and then covered in an 80% dark chocolate. And Sounds awesome. if you shake it, you could hear all the oh, seeds in oh, it. I didn't know that. It's kind of like a maraca. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't know that. Oh, I went. Can you it's, hear it? I it's hope like you can those, hear it. Uh, those rain sticks. <laughs> <laughs> I was moving it earlier and I think seed, yeah, seeds oh, yeah, are coming yeah. out. So That's so cool. Mm. I'm kind of scared. That. I'm kind of scared to nervous. try this, but it's probably the thing I've been most excited to try today yeah. I've never had anything like this. Which All end right. are you going for? I'm going to go for the, the chili end first. I'll go for this right. side. Here goes nothing. Cheers, chocolate chilies. <laughs> Tastes the roastedness. I just think I just got a bunch of chocolate. <laughs> oh, I just got caramely taste. That's good. That's what I'm tasting right now. Caramel and chocolate are amazing. I feel. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I totally did not mean to do he that. He just dropped time. all the seeds. Man, I wanted the heat. You can try some of mine, but yeah. I feel a little bit of heat in my throat. It tastes a lot of caramely chocolate. But then the, the chili, since it's roasted, it's very like, kind of like thin and crunchy. Yeah, yeah. So you get that crunchy. I don't know if you can see it. Taste in it. It's very thin in there, but yeah, the That's caramel good. is very chewy. The chocolate's sweet, but not too sweet. Yeah, but the caramel mix. makes it sweet. Oh yeah. <coughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh no. The mm -hmm. seed just burned my throat. <laughs> the end piece is gonna be the most spicy, I think, for me. Less chocolate and caramel. Yeah, it's I was scared it was going to torch my mouth. Yeah. But it's a very, it's, it's like a bad. nice, enjoyable heat just in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun treat to eat though. Yeah, this is really good. They had really delicious other looking like truffles and stuff there. And they let us try a sample of their oh. drinking chocolate. Oh man, this power was super crunchy. Yeah, it's like the thin, it's kind of like a, like a wafer or flaky. <clears throat> uh oh, it's spicy. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It's fun to eat though, because it's sweet and spicy all it's together. It's like a complex dish. It's clearing my sinuses. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see fire? <laughs> Gonna cool things off with some half and half. Only dairy we have in the van. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does make your throat feel less burning. Mm. Nice. So one thing that Santa Fe is famous for is art. And one thing we really wanted to do when we eventually made it to Santa Fe is go to this thing called Meow Wolf, which is like this immersive art experience. It looks crazy cool, but unfortunately due to COVID, it is closed. But if you visit when maybe life is somewhat more normal again, definitely go check it out. And beyond Meow Wolf in Santa Fe, there are over 250 art galleries all around town. And in this area called Canyon Road, there are about 100 art galleries. So we're gonna walk around that area a little bit, see what we can see. Got it. <laughs> and 
for our final Santa Fe food that we wanted to try today. We're actually going to make it in the van ourselves. Something that we did not know is that Frito Pies are said to have started right here in Santa Fe in the 1960s at the lunch counter of a spot called Woolworths. Woolworths, it's really hard to say, which is now called the Five and Dime and it's right in the heart of downtown Santa Fe. It's kind of disputed if it's 100% true if they originated in Santa Fe, but whether it's true or not, they're apparently a popular Santa Fe snack. We wanted to try it at the Five and Dime, but the recipe is not gluten-free, so we researched some recipes on our own, and we're going to try to recreate it right here in the van. It's probably not going to be exactly the same as if you got it at the Five and Dime, but it still should be pretty dang good. So based on our research and what we think goes into a Five and Dime Frito pie, we have ground beef, obviously have the Fritos, and then we have this red chili sauce. And this is actually from Las Cruces, New Mexico, so it's semi-local and it looks really good. It is only, I think, four or five ingredients and it's a very beautiful red color. All right, next very important ingredient, which kind of goes against like Texas chili rules, but we're in New Mexico, so you gotta add the pinto beans. And then of course you're gonna top it with some cheddar cheese and some diced yellow onion. First things first, we're gonna cook the ground beef. Step, add the beans. Which we drain so they wouldn't be too liquidy. The next most important step is add the red chili sauce. So we're gonna add maybe about half of it, just in case it's too watery, we don't want that to happen. Um, and we got the medium, just because hopefully there's a little heat in there, but not like mass the taste, so here goes. All right, we're going all in. Oh yeah. That color is so pretty. Oh, it's so vibrant. It's looking pretty dang good. So something really cool about the Frito pie at Five and Dime is that they actually serve it to you in a Frito bag. So from the photos I've seen, what they do is they cut it like this. And then they pour all the goodness in here. And this is actually a really large bag of Fritos. I thought we were gonna get two small bags, but Adam decided to go big and get one big bag. So I think we're gonna maybe dump out some of the Fritos so we have enough room for all the goodness on top. I messed up, whoops. <laughs> we have to share now, which is a problem because we both like to eat a lot. And so we always are fighting on who gets the most. <laughs> all right, time to make the pie. So we're gonna scoop up a bunch of this. Oh yeah. getting really hot. Yeah. And then, that familiar Frito pie ooh, smell. this bag is so hot, beware. It is not. Hey, where's mine? Throw a bunch of cheese on yeah. there. And I did look at a photo and I think they use like a Colby Jack cheese, but we're doing cheddar. Cheddar, cheddar makes it better, is what they say. And then we'll do onions on Adam's half because I do not like onions, especially raw onions. And that is a a plus K five and dime Frito pie mm -hmm. in a van. <laughs> oh, it smells good. It smells really good. It smells kind of like childhood because growing up, my best friend's mom always made Frito pie in Texas. So this just brings back lots of memories. Yeah, I used to have this growing up all the time, probably once a week, I don't know. I never did it in the bag like this though. Oh, the cheese is it's melting. It's gonna make it taste even better. You gotta get the perfect crunchy, no onion bite. Oh, yours looks nice. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> that is dang good. We did a good job. Yeah, nice. Nice. I'm glad we got the medium because it's spicy, but it's not like, oh man, all it tastes is spice. It just has a lot of good flavor. Yeah, there's tons of flavor. And the chips are nice and crunchy, so there are a few that are soggy, but they still have a pretty good mm -hmm. crunch. The cheese is melty. Oh, it's delicious. It's I a great like combo. They have the crunchy chips, the beans are mushy, which is a needed flavor <laughs> or texture. The beef is, is hearty. Cheese gives it like a creaminess. It's, it's perfect. Oh, it's delicious. Spice. This might just have to become like our go-to van meal. This, this yeah. is a really easy van yeah, meal. This took us, took us maybe 10 minutes. Oh yeah. Mm. 
We barely scratched the surface of what Santa Fe has to offer and we'll definitely be back when more things are open. But from what we saw and ate today, it's just such a beautiful and very delicious city. Yeah, every time we've visited New Mexico, the state as a whole, we've just always had such a great time. The cities are fun, the nature's freaking beautiful. And just like the overall culture of the state is just different and, and just fun and awesome. And we just kind of feel like the state overall is just kind of underrated. Yeah. So although our time in Santa Fe is over, we are about to head an hour and a half north to Taos because tomorrow we have a very fun hiking adventure.